Uh, hello everyone, uh, my name is Sandy Vinarco. I'm the lead PM uh, in Azure Data Governance. Uh, my team uh, focuses on modernizing SQL Server Integration Services or SSIS on premises and also in the cloud as part of uh, ADF or Azure Data, Data Factory. So uh, today, say, today, in today's session, uh, I'd like to cover uh, all of the features that we release that will help you unblock uh, or accelerate uh, the SQL migration from on-prem to the cloud using an all-pass solution of Azure SQL and Azure Data Factory. Uh, since this um, uh, session is very short, about 20 minutes, if you have any question, just type it on the chat window and my uh, my colleague uh, Grace will actually help answer the question. Uh, otherwise, uh, later on um, uh, at the end of this uh, slide, there's uh, my email, so you can send me email directly if you have any other question that uh, cannot be addressed in this session. OK, so without further ado, uh, here's my our agenda. So we'll cover first uh, how we actually uh, uh, coupled uh, Azure SQL and SSIS and ADF together uh, as uh, the best all-pass solution for SQL Server migration. And then I will uh, take you down the memory lane to cover the evolution of on-premises uh, SSIS to the cloud, highlighting all those features that will unblock or accelerate your uh, uh, SSIS migration. And then I'll focus uh, in one of those features that uh, will allow you to securely access data both on on-prem and in the cloud using the, uh, the uh, com compute resource inside Azure Data, Data Factory to run SSIS. And finally, if we have enough time, I will do a, a bunch of demo. Uh, it's probably I will be able to do a provisioning of a SSIS compute engine in ADF and monitoring it. And if I have more time, I will also do a assessment, testing, and a migration of SSIS packages using SSDT tool. Uh, if I don't have enough time in the resources part of this uh, deck, you can find uh, all the uh, link to our documentation and blogs that will also highlight uh, the demo and the uh, and the instruction how to do this um, uh, these scenarios. Okay, let's start with the first section. Uh, Azure SQL and SSIS in ADF are better together. So Azure SQL and SSIS in ADF have come a long way. Uh, we we actually tied uh, tied them together to provide the best all pass platform as a service solution for SQL Server migration. The first feature that we actually introduce is allowing uh, Azure SQL database or managed instance to host SSS catalog or SSS DB. So that's the first uh, uh, feature that will help you uh, uh, on uh, SSS migration. And then um, we also introduce a new uh, package management layer, uh, what we call SSIS Integration Runtime Package Store, that will allow you to manage packages that's not stored in uh, an SSIS DB. So this help you uh, with a legacy package deployment model where you store your packages in a SQL Server database or MSDB or in a file system. So in this case, the MSDB can also be hosted in Azure SQL Managed Instant. Now we um, once we support all uh, deployment models, project and package deployment model, so you have all these packages in uh, SSSDB, MSDB or file system, you can orchestrate them using Azure SQL Managed Instant Agent, which is a SQL Server agent uh, running in the cloud. Uh, and also, we recently we have, we have just released a, a joint uh, business continuity and uh, that uh, disaster recovery solution. Uh, which is essentially a dual standby SSIS IR integration runtime pair that will help support your uh, Azure SQL database or managed instant rep, uh, geo replication and failover. So essentially, when you have a, a two different managed instances or two different uh, Azure SQL DB into into regions, when you do a failover. Uh, the SSS IR also will swap uh, from primary to secondary uh, seamlessly with a zero downtime. So I will show you that also how to enable it later on uh, when you provision SSS IR. Uh, another feature that we also um, uh, um, released to support migration is um, usually um, a lot of packages uh, on-prem use a OLEDB connection manager with Windows off. Now, when you might actually migrate your SQL Server uh, to the cloud, uh, to Azure SQL Database or Managed Instant, there is no Windows authentication. So we actually support uh, a, a different method of authentication from SSS IR to this uh, uh, database in the cloud using AAD authentication with ADF Managed Identity. In this case, you can actually do away from um, uh, uh, authentication credential at all. You don't have to use credential and you use the service principle or the managed identity of Azure Data Factory. And finally, for uh, added uh, security, 
when you configure your Azure SQL database or manage instant with a, a private endpoint, with a VNet service endpoint, or even with IP firewall rule, uh, or even injected, uh, for example, managed instant inside the VNet, SSIs IR can still um, access them by injecting SSI, SSIs IR itself into a VNet, or uh, we have uh, also introduced a feature to bring your own IP, um, uh, IP static IP addresses, so you can uh, allow those uh, IP addresses on the firewall. And also we introduce um, a feature where you can actually enable a virtual network network address translation or NAT that also will introduce a static public IP. So those are um, all those features that we introduced to tie uh, your SQL and SSIs together. Uh, from the business point of view, uh, economically, you can make a huge savings because uh, if you already have uh, a SQL Silver on premises, and uh, you want to uh, lift and shift not only your SQL uh, Server, but also SSIS, you can use the same license on both the Azure SQL DB or Managed Instant and SSIS in Azure Data Factory. As you can see, um, one, uh, one uh, core of standard edition license can be exchanged with one core of uh, virtual core standard edition in the cloud. Enterprise core from on-premise can be exchanged with uh, enterprise core in the cloud. The new thing that we introduced is like one enterprise core of SQL Server on-prem can be exchanged with four standard vCore in the cloud and vice versa, four standard um, uh, on-prem license uh, core can be exchanged with uh, one uh, virtual enterprise core. So in this case, you can uh, maximize the value of these uh, existing SQL Server licenses. So in the cloud, you can uh, almost um, uh, achieve a huge saving. Uh, one of the, for example, one of the size of the node for uh, SSIS IR, you can achieve up to 88% saving. So you only pay for the, the, the VM hardware and the managed services. You don't have to pay for a SQL IP license anymore. Okay. So let's uh, let's go through the se next section. Uh, uh, we will go to the um, history of uh, evolution of SSIs from a standard traditional on-premises tool to a, a platform as a, a platform as a service in the cloud. SSI has been around for a long time. Uh, I believe it was um, uh, it was created in year almost like in year 2000. Uh, it was originally called DTS or Data Transformation Service. And in 2005, uh, we actually over uh, basically over uh, rewrite the whole thing and uh, rechristen the, the product uh, to become SSIS. In 2012, uh, we introduced the project deployment model where you can actually uh, host all your packages and project inside the SSIS DB or catalog. And 2016 is a very interesting uh, year because in, in that year we start um, uh, in, uh, basically a releasing feature where SSIS can connect to the cloud. So we have this Azure feature pack that connect to all these Azure resources in the cloud. And it's uh, funnily enough, it's the first time we actually introduced telemetry. And we actually start seeing home that there are many, many billions of package execution that's still running on premises. And uh, there's a lot of potential for customer who wants to uh, lift and shift those package execution from on premises to the cloud. So coming to 2017, this is actually a, a big bang year for us because in 2017, we, for the first time, we introduced uh, SSIs running on Linux. But the most important feature that we introduced is actually a scale out feature where you can actually run SSS packages on a, on a, basically on a master worker um, uh, topology or architecture where you have one master and multiple worker and you can run multiple packages in parallel at the same time. This, this architecture, the scale-out fe scale feature, formed the base for our uh, platform or service in the cloud. So we start working on um, SSIS inside ADF starting in 2017, and the two requirements that are very important for us to, uh, to ensure that we support it in the cloud, first is to make sure that all the traditional tools that, uh, that the customer use, like for example, uh, SQL Server Data Tools and SQL Server Management Studio can be supported also in the cloud. So basically preserving uh, all this um, uh, customer skill set, right? And also to make sure that all custom uh, custom component, custom code that they, they use, uh, that customer implement on, on, um, uh, on premises can be also supported in the cloud. So when we actually decided to lift and shift um, uh, SSIs to the cloud, the first thing we do is like we separate storage from compute. So uh, the storage of the uh, packages can be supported in Azure SQL database or managed instant, for example, in SSDB, uh, SSISDB or MSDB, like I mentioned before, and we also support package deployment model. 
So you can also uh, 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 deploy your packages into Azure files or file system. And the compute itself is actually hosted in Azure Data Factory. And this compute, like I mentioned before, is called SSI's Integration Runtime or SSI's IR. And uh, in terms of tool, we make sure that all the tools can be used and we basically Azure enabled SSDT and SSMS. So you can actually deploy to the cloud using SSDT and SSMS, and you can even do a package assessment for cloud compatibility on uh, SSDT, test uh, execution in Azure, and even migrate or redeploy to Azure. And uh, some of the command prompt, common prompt utilities like DTUtil and DTXX is also Azure enabled. So you can actually do um, a different thing with this, uh, with this uh, online um, uh, command line, right? Uh, also, like I mentioned before, uh, Azure SQL Managed Instant Agent uh, is also enabled to make sure that it can orchestrate and schedule package uh, execution on SSIS IR in ADF. In terms of uh, extensibility, we provide a new custom setup interface so such that all custom code, custom component, or third-party component that you use to have in uh, on-premises can be run in the cloud, can be uh, deployed there, and we even introduced recently um, a new interface which is called Express Custom Setup. So you don't actually have to have a custom setup script. You can simply enter a license key. For example, if you buy uh, third party connectors from Kingsway Soft or, uh, or um, uh, Sentry One, Pragmatic Works, et cetera, or Theobalt Software for sub connectivity, you just, uh, you just type in the, the license key that you bought and automatically the connectors are available in the cloud. And in terms of pricing, uh, we support a pay, uh, pay as you go and also bring your own license to get the Azure hybrid benefit that I highlighted before to, uh, uh, to basically uh, uh, have a significant cost savings. OK. Next, um, uh, as I mentioned before, when you run your SSI in the cloud, they, you might still have some data stores running on premises. So we introduced two ways, uh, two features to allow SSIS IR to reach down to on-premises using VNet injection or a self-hosted IR as a proxy. So these two methods are very important for accessing on-prem data. And in terms of like a cloud enhancement, we also support Windows authentication for those um, uh, data store on-prem. Sometimes um, a customer don't want to change the package at all, so they want to still run the package in the cloud on SSIS IR, but still using Windows authentication to connect to file system or SQL Server on-prem. So we support that scenario also. We support Azure Key Vault, where you can store secrets in, um, in uh, AKV. And like I mentioned before, we support authentic uh, authentication with the managed identity of ADF. For uh, packages that you stored in uh, Azure SQL database, for example, uh, as you know, there's no SQL Server agent in Azure SQL database. So in, term, uh, in order for you to orchestrate the uh, package execution in, in that scenario, you can use Azure Data Factory pipeline. We introduce a first class SSS activity that can be orchestrated uh, as, a, as an ADF pipelines. And you can combine or chain those activities with other activities, native ADF, uh, ADF activities, and you can basically innovate uh, and create um, a, a more modern pipelines in the cloud. We also integrate with Azure Monitor, so you can actually um, uh, view metrics, uh, query logs, and even create alerts, uh, email alerts, etc. Uh, to see if your package uh, succeed or fail. And finally, uh, recently we also introduced um, uh, data lineage support with the uh, Azure Purview data catalog integration. So SSIs in ADF has been uh, available uh, since June 2018 and it has a 24 seven live set support, okay? So let's uh, uh, let's dig deeper onto the uh, features that allow you to secure, uh, securely access data from SSIs in ADF. As you know, on-premises is very simple. You have uh, your SSIs running in the same uh, behind corporate firewall on-premises, right? But in the cloud, you actually have to use certain feature to make sure that the access, accessing data on-premises or in the cloud are always secure. So this feature, like I mentioned before, there's a virtual network injection. There's self-hosted IR as a proxy, uh, AKV integration, AAD authentication, and bring your own IP or uh, SSIs IR um, for SSIs IR or set up uh, VNet net. Uh, digging deeper on these uh, two methods of uh, data access on premises, which is a VNet injection and self hosted IR as a proxy, you can see I will show what is the pros and cons, uh, the pros and cons when, when uh, selecting between these two methods. 
when you use finite injection, uh, the process obviously it's all uh, the infrastructure is all managed, so you don't have to manage your own machine, right? It support all the connectivity and it has a direct data movement. So you move data directly from um, from your data store to the uh, to the uh, compute resource, and then from the compute resource move it to the uh, destination. The the difficulty sometimes is uh, actually it's uh, it's quite complex to set up a VNet injection. The one that you need to actually um, pay attention to is like uh, the inbound and outbound traffic requirements. If, if you can see at the arrow in the diagram, there's a lot of arrows coming out from the uh, from your VNet, and uh, there are two arrows coming in, right? The one that you need to pay attention is the one coming in because uh, you actually need to have some inbound traffic for our uh, underlying infrastructure to manage SSS IR. So some company has a strict policy that doesn't allow inbound traffic. So in that case, you probably have to use a different uh, method for uh, VNet injection, which is a self-hosted IR, for example. OK. Uh, another requirement from uh, enterprise uh, customer is actually to do a uh, force tunneling. And this is when you want to audit or um, inspect outbound traffic from the SSIR. You can do this and you can actually um, uh, route all the traffic to a network virtual appliance or to Azure Firewall or even on-prem firewall. You just need to make sure that there are certain traffic that you have to exclude from this uh, force tunneling. Uh, the traffic that's important that need to be excluded is the, basically the, the traffic between Azure Batch, uh, the, in, uh, the underlying infrastructure for SSIR. And, um, and SSISIR itself. Uh, so you have to create a UDR to uh, exclude that traffic from force tunneling. And obviously on those firewall, you make sure that like uh, the outbound traffic to go to the um, uh, management service in the, in the back end uh, are still allowed. Moving on to the next method of uh, on-prem data access, you can see with a self-hosted IR, uh, there's less requirement for a um, uh, network connection. There's no inbound uh, inbound uh, requirement. It's, it's all outbound requirements. So it's a uh, it's actually has a, a better um, uh, uh, basically a less less restricted uh, requirement for a connection to the cloud. Uh, the the disadvantage is uh, essentially you have to manage your own machine. And right now, the support for self-hosted IR as a proxy is limited to some data flow components, although we're actually expanding the support for other control flow components. And finally, uh, this is like a brand new uh, feature that we're actually releasing. We actually in the preview of uh, a new express VNAT injection. In this case, we actually uh, introducing um, a way such that uh, you can inject your SSISR into a VNAT without inbound traffic requirement. So if you look at the table uh, on, the, uh, on, on the right hand side, you can see the difference between standard virtual network injection and the express one. In the express one, there is no requirement for inbound traffic. So this is actually uh, something that uh, um, uh, asked by a lot of enterprise customer, and this should actually uh, really um, uh, meet, their, uh, meet their needs, okay? If you're interested to, to try this pre preview, just contact me from my email address later. Uh, that's also in the, in the deck at the last page. All right. So without further ado, let me try to do a demo in two minutes if I can do quickly uh, uh, running through ADF. Let me show you quick. OK, so we are on the ADF um, management hub uh, uh, or portal, right? In here, you can see all my um, uh, integration runtimes running. There's all different type of integration runtime. So I'm going to create a new SSIS IR by clicking the new button. Select the uh, SSIS, in, SSIS IR integration to provision. In here, you can see uh, uh, there's a settings to set up the compute. So you can give the name, uh, the location where the compute will be located, the size of the node for uh, SSIR, and the size of the cluster for SSIR, how many nodes per cluster. And you can select the edition or license, uh, standard or enterprise. And then here, you can do the saving, for example, like um, I can just provision a cluster of one node, and then uh, uh, I will bring my own license, so I get a cheaper price in terms of uh, uh, cost, cost of running it. And then next, the, there's a deployment setting where you can decide if you want to host your packages in SSIS DB. In here, you can put the, uh, the, uh, your Azure subscription, and you can select your... Um, uh, for example, um, uh, SQL Managed Instance or SQL DB, or if you want to do package um, uh, package uh, deployment model, you don't have to bring SSIS DB. And if you want to uh, create package store, 
For example, you can here, you can create a package store a management layer on top of MSDB hosted by managed intern or file system. One thing that I want to highlight quickly, let me see if I have it here. Um, actually, it's not here. All right, so let me let me just not uh, let me just uh, use a package deployment model. So essentially, I will want to um, uh, host my package in file system, for example. And when I hit next, you can see all these advanced settings page. In here, you can decide if you want to um, customize your SSIS IR with a custom setup uh, script, right? Or you can add uh, Express custom setup. In here, I can show you quickly. You can install Azure PowerShell. You can install license component. For example, in here, you can select license component from Kingsway Soft, from Theobald Software, from Sentry One, etc. Right? Uh, you can inject your um, you can inject your uh, SSIR, SSIR to a VNet. You can select which VNet you want to inject. And if you don't want to use a VNet, you can use a uh, self-hosted IR. And then you have to put the name of your self-hosted IR and, and then a staging uh, storage link service where um, the self-hosted IR will move the data and then SSSR will pick up the data. Okay. So let me just uh, close this. Let, let's just use a basic one without any advanced setting. And next you will see the summary, the summary of your all the property you set for SSSIR and you just create it basically. And then when you click on create, essentially you will create a new integration runtime. And you can see there's a new one created. And if I want to show you um, the existing one, I can show you a monitoring of the existing one, what it looks like. For example, this one, it's running. So I have a pre-created uh, SSS IR in the cloud, and you can see uh, it's actually using SSS DB hosted by my SQL managed instance. I also set up um, a self-hosted IR. I also injected it into a, a VNet, so it can use either a VNet injection or self-hosted IR to access data on premises. Uh, I also uh, bring my own uh, static API addresses so I can actually um, uh, uh, allow those API, address, uh, API addresses on my data store uh, firewall. I also uh, set up a, a BCDR with uh, my uh, uh, SQL managed instance. So my SQL managed instance is actually right now in East US and West, um, West US. So this one is actually a primary, but be before, because I'm still like uh, working on the failover uh, uh, connection, it has not been highlighted which one is this SSIS IR. Once I make the failover connection happens, then uh, the, the dual standby pair role will highlight it as primary or secondary. And I guess that's it. Uh, we have um, we about two minutes uh, over time. Um, if you have any question, uh, I let me check in the, in the chat window if uh, Grace already answered some of the question. Oh, there's no question. That's okay then. So, um, oh, before I go, uh, let me share you the, the slides of uh, my context, okay? Let me check, where is this? Okay, give me a second. And so this is my email address. Please take take it down. So in case you have a question uh, later down the line, just email me directly. And there's the link to our SSI Steam blocks, where we have a lot of blocks on like uh, using um, uh, CI/CD practices, uh, how to um, uh, do migration, how to use SSDT, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And there's a bunch of uh, links to our documentation, and also a full slides of a deep dive presentation uh, on that uh, on that page. Okay, if you uh, if you want to learn more, uh, there's a there's a link for all the video and um, uh, our deck, right? And with that, uh, thank you for joining.